I like to think that people will remember him, that he was sort of like amongst those early guys who made uh, kite surfing a sport rather than just a circus act. Aaron has always been that rider that always wants to push the limits and always wants to raise the bar and not happy if he's not raising the bar. The progression in kiting without Aaron would have been much slower. He moved from one discipline to the other and it's kind of like wherever he was was the main discipline at the time. He is so well-rounded. Like, like you said, he can go to King of the Air and be, win the event or podium there. He can come here, win the event or podium. He's gonna go to the new GKA format and kill it there. So it's like, he can really do it all, so. Uh, he's laid down the most innovative moves. Uh, he's won the most amount of world titles uh, and he's just got an unmatched personality. Like he's a bit reserved, but once you get a piece of him or you get to know him, like he's a man at heart, you know? So yeah, I think everybody loves Aaron. The discipline of big air differs from any other in the sport of kiteboarding. It's probably the most purest form of, of kite surfing really. It's, it's what when someone's just walking along a beach and they see somebody out kite surfing and they see somebody do a jump. I mean that in essence is big air. When I first started kiteboarding, the only discipline was big air. Even if you start now, your first aspirations are to jump as high as possible. So where the guys have really taken big air to more recently, is with the kite loops and the mega loops. When people start doing kite loops, they're looping it through the wind window. And that's like pulling them sideways with loads and loads of force. It means they're landing with way more speed. And really this side of the sport has, in the last couple of years, really started to get pushed further. Aaron's biggest influence on the big air discipline or extreme discipline is his ability to combine other disciplines within the big air discipline. For example, wake style with handle passes that we tend to do in light to moderate winds and do them way up in the sky at competitions and be the only person that's doing them. Yeah, I mean, what Aaron Hedlow does for extreme kiteboarding is pushing the limits, you know? Cape Town is the place for big air because of the waves. When you jump for the big, big jumps, it's nice to have a nice ramp, but if it's moving towards you and pushing you away from your kite, then you go so much higher. There's no doubt that Cape Town has shaped me in so many ways. Every year it's harsh conditions would prepare me for the season to come. Nowadays it's the meeting point for some of my best friends and together we throw some big air.
there's definitely been some really key people that have helped me along the way and none more so than my mom and my dad. Yeah, his parents took him around to wherever he needed to be in order to perform his best for kiteboarding. So his parents took him around to all the contests and yeah, showed him the ropes on how to travel and uh, how to compete. And that's been really inspiring for me, you know. Aaron started in about 99, I think. And then by 2000, it was work way better than I was. So I gave it up and concentrated on coaching him. <laughs> Back in the day, his dad had a huge influence. He really worked with his dad together on tricks. His dad would be really constructively criticising, but highly critical of what he did. And I think he's taken that on himself internally and he's able to do that to himself now, like criticise himself really heavily and find the right way to path through. I think my dad saw potential in me and just put me in the right place at the right time. He was never pushy, he was never, he just let me do what I want to do. And I think he just saw an opportunity in me where I could lead this life and grow with kiteboarding in the same way someone like Robbie Nash grew with windsurfing. Although we don't travel around and kite together as much as we used to, we still managed to catch a few sessions together. Most recently we were in Langerbahn and it was great to see him pulling some tricks and still surprising me now. So the Mega Loop was a trick that both Aaron and Ruben invented, but it was known as the Mega Loop once we had a year where everything we did became a Mega This a mega mob, a mega bosch mob, and it then mega loop derived probably around 2007, something like this. So mega loop has become a very well known term. Unhooked Tricks came about because of the progression of the sport. We'd got as far as we could in doing board offs and hooked in tricks, so the natural progression was to unhook and try something new. So weight style is when the kite is stationary but low, so it's generating lots of pull sideways, and a rider basically loads up against the power of the kite and then uses that to spring. And they're also unhooked, so that means that they're taking all that power through their through their body, they're, they're not connected to the kite other than just by holding the bar. Aaron has had the biggest influence on freestyle from any rider on the planet in history. He was kiteboarding on the world tour at a very young age and he single-handedly helped move the discipline away from big board offs and big air style tricks and push the wake style movement. He was the guy who, on the whole, not necessarily invented the tricks because they were, a lot of them have come from wakeboarding, but he worked out how to do them. 
he worked out how do we take this trick that someone's doing behind a boat or a cable park and how do we do it behind a kite? Kite surfing back then was just jumping, never unhooking, you know, always in the harness, spinning around three times one way, three times the other way and such like that. And that lasted for about the first two years, you know, up to about 2001. As the prog it progression went on, they started to take the board off. They used to have a handle on it in the old days. It stayed like that for a while and then it moved on to kite loops and then unhooked. Right. And now it's all coming back round again. And they're putting handles back on the board and they're all doing board off. So what goes around comes around. Being from the UK, I feel like most kiteboarders aspire to go on holiday to some exotic location with crystal clear water, sandy beaches, blue skies. So when we were looking for a spot to go and do some freestyle and we got the call from the catamaran to go to the Grenadines, the plan was already made. <laughs> It's easy to get addicted to low powered unhook tricks because of the technicality. The amount of beatings and time it takes for you to land that first trick takes forever and when you finally nail it there's no better feeling. The trick starts way before you even take off. I visualise the trick and every small detail that is needed to land it. I pop as hard as I possibly can, putting all the force through my body and making sure the takeoff is perfectly correct. The rest goes very quick and it's all about the small details. When you land it with speed and the kite in the right position, there's no better feeling.
Park riding is gaining popularity in the sport and it involves riding obstacles that can come in different shapes and forms, usually a kicker or a rail. Riding park, I mean, it's in every other board sport. It seems to me still crazy that in kiteboarding it's such a niche aspect. For us and for any kiter, it's about progression, right? You start kiting and you learn one trick and then the next, and there's like so many steps and ways to move forward. And in park riding, there's just so many possibilities and tricks and spots and different rails and setups that you can do that it just keeps it so fun and entertaining. I guess for Aaron it'd be a mixture of tech tricks and big tricks. You show him something, be like, hey, check out this move I just learned. And he will go and do this trick with his own little style on it or do it a little bit different. The fact that someone like him with a reputation he had back then took his time to like get into this discipline and get good at it just gave credibility to bike riding. Park style brought a different dimension to my riding. I was always used to riding on flat water and doing loaded pop tricks, whereas with the kickers I could actually fly off in a different axis and do different kind of spins and tricks. People always ask me how I stay motivated in kiteboarding and I think it's because there's different disciplines and different elements that keep me interested in it. And it's things like park style, adding these new dimensions and these new challenges that keep me coming back for more. It's just another discipline that you can ride with the same kite, the same board. It's just, just fun. Cape Hatteras is a really unique place in the world. It's a peninsula with ocean on one side, a sound on the other, and within this sound you have these grass areas that create shallow flat water, and Reels really made the best out of these conditions by placing some rails in there, and it's just perfect for us to ride. Going back home.
Parkstyle brought a different dimension to my riding. I was always used to riding on flat water and with the rails, it's already just really difficult to go straight across it. So it was a new type of challenge for me and I think that's what I enjoyed the most. A unique part of kiteboarding is the ability to explore and in and around Cape Hatteras, the downwinders are like no other. It can be fun getting creative with natural features and it makes me appreciate just how much fun can be had by simply going for a cruise. Twenty eighteen saw a big shock in the industry, with our sponsor undertaking a name change that meant everything needed rebranding down to the smallest detail. Duotone was born and the face of a new era started in Puerto Rico. Together with Noe Craig and the team, we built a rail and put the new kit to the test. Aaron always wants to win. Like, even when he's free riding, he wants, he's, he just wants to win everything. I mean, Aaron was just so far ahead of everybody else. Like, when he won those five world championships, it was like, it was hard to touch him. He was just the king. Like, everyone knew him as the king of kiteboarding, and we haven't really seen that elsewhere in the sports. He doesn't want the, the fame. He wants to win the competition. That's the difference between Aaron and some others, you know. It was, life or death for me it was just if i lost or came second it was just never good enough and i don't know it's it's an addictive feeling that you know, i just kept on doing it for for years and years and yeah i can't really stop As he was maturing, Jason took over the managership of him. He ended up becoming such a key part in, in what I was doing and went on to become like my manager, but was basically, basically my older brother. I was impressed by Aaron because he was, he took it seriously. He just had a natural gift. It was always important for me to try new tricks in between competitions and most importantly, after the last event of the year. Towards the end of the season, Brazil has some of the most consistent conditions. That's why I go there, to get the maximum out of my riding.
galaxies Address me as your majesty So better say your majesty I might react erratically Throw you in the fire Purifier, I'm the sire My empire's on the rise Or better find yourself a place to hide Your grace and fine But say it twice My name divine, I'm aiming high Don't look in my face or eyes Take a bow and save your life Glory to the emperor My temperature is rising Oh, it's hot, it's getting violent I need silence, I need silence Shh. So this is it, this is the spot where I first started kiting. So this is like the main beach where it all began for me. I mean, I remember being seven or eight years old, just learning to normal surf, would go out there. And uh, yeah, this is where I learned some of my first rotations, kite surfing. And I remember coming down to this beach right here where there's some amazing kickers and great cross shore wind. So yeah thankful to have this as my home spot back when I was young, growing up. The UK and England has always felt like my home. It's just where I was born, where most of my family and friends have always been. So I guess that was what attracted me back here, where I actually finally feel like I'm living somewhere. The UK has some crazy weather patterns and it just shapes you up as a rider to be ready for anything. We have some big storms come through where you'll be kiting in the rain, but then the next day it might be light winds with perfect flat water and sun. We have cables all over the country, waves in certain areas, some rails in other places. So it's really a, a country that shaped me and got me ready for all these different disciplines that I'm into.
you know, a 20 year competitive career is longer than anybody has ever had within kiteboarding. And I think, you know, the thing that makes Aaron unique and one of the best riders of all time is the fact that he has had an impact on almost every discipline that kiteboarding has to offer. I can't think off the top of my head any other rider in the sport that's had as many influences in as many different disciplines as Aaron has. And I think this is what makes him a unique rider. I've poured my heart and soul into this sport for so many years. I guess I've just always strived to be one of the best kiteboarders on the planet. One day, when I look back at what I've achieved, I'd like to think I've left my mark with my contribution to the sport. If there's any legacy to be left, then I hope that would be it. But that day is yet to come. There's still plenty more for me to do. Thank you.